All right, screencast number four. We're going to talk about acid-base reactions and titrations. And what do we want to What do we want to come away from this screencast? We want to come away with um, products of a neutralization reaction. What are they? And then what is a titration? Some of you have done it in lab, but some of you will do it in lab. And how is it used to determine the concentration of an unknown acid or base solution? First up, neutralization reactions. Reaction between an acid and a base produces a water and a salt. Salt is really just an ionic compound composed of the anion from the acid and a cation from the base. Okay. It really, um, these could be viewed as double replacement reactions, right? The cation from the base, I know it's a base because it's got the hydroxide in it, is going to go with the anion of the acid. Again, acid because it has an H in it, so I make sodium sulfate. Then the H plus a hydrogen ion goes with the hydroxide to make water. Okay, So the reaction of an acid and a base result in water and a salt. Titration. This is adding an acid or a base, we'll be doing a base in lab, of a known concentration to a solution of a base or an acid of an unknown concentration. Okay, you do have to know the volume of your acid or base that you're looking to calculate the concentration for. Then you can use the volume and the concentration of the known to calculate the concentration of the unknown. This would be the setup. Okay. This is a burette. It is a piece of glassware with graduation, um, graduations on it, tick marks, volume, a stopcock that controls the flow of that acid or base into a beaker or Erlenmeyer flask. This is what contains the unknown acid or base. Okay, and you do have to have a known, con a known volume. Okay, in this burette, you have to have the known concentration. And you are going to add a certain amount until you see an indication that this has been neutralized. So at the end, you will have a known volume to neutralize the unknown. On a curve, titration curve, you'll have an equivalence point, and that's the point at which the two solutions are in chemically equivalent amounts, meaning the moles of hydronium ion, that H plus, equals the moles of the hydroxide. It is also called an endpoint when an indicator is present. Okay, there are subtle differences between the equivalence point and the endpoint, but both of them are used to show when the solution has been neutralized when those um, moles of acid are equal to the moles of base particularly the moles of the hydronium H plus and the moles of the hydroxide. All right, so let's look at the titration of 30 milliliters of a sodium hydroxide solution, unknown concentration. And I'm going to um, use sulfuric acid solution, 0.1 molar, to neutralize it. In the experiment, I found that it was 45.2 milliliters of that sulfuric acid solution to neutralize the sodium hydroxide find the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution. Well, first thing to do is to write the uh, equation. I have sodium hydroxide reacting with a solution of sulfuric acid. These are both aqueous, aqueous, going to form my salt that's soluble and water this balanced? Well, it will be if I put a 2 in front of here and a 2 in front of the water. 
Now I have a volume and a molarity. Volume times molarity can give me, or will give me, moles. So let's take that 45.2 milliliters of my sulfuric acid solution. Let's convert that to liters. Remember, volume times molarity gives me the number of moles, so I get to liters, multiply that times my moles of sulfuric in one liter times for every one mole, this is the mole of ratio, one mole of sulfuric for two moles of sodium hydroxide. I'm looking for the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Right now I've gotten to the moles. Moles sulfuric cancel, liters cancel, milliliters cancel. So now to get molarity I want to have moles over volume. Well I know that I started with 30 milliliters and then all I need to do is then convert those milliliters to liters and I will have the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution used in the experiment. In my calculator, I'm going to take the 45.2, divide by 1,000 times 0.1 times 2, and then divide by 30, and then multiply by 1,000. And the answer I get is 0.3013. I'm going to need three sig figs, so this should be reported as 301 molar sodium hydroxide. Alrighty.